Well, you can also gauge your spiritual health by your tongue, and that means by what you say and what you speak. And so we're going to look at that. We're going to recap just a little bit of it, but then we're going to move into the message this morning. The message this morning is stick out your tongue part two, all right? So now next week it won't be stick out your tongue part three. I'm just telling you. So actually I'm excited about next week too, but we got to get through this to get there. So this is the foundation of it. And so you need to get a hold of this. Now in Proverbs chapter 18 or yeah, Proverbs 18, verse 21, it says, death and life, that's pretty, <laughs> death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, did you get that? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, here's, we have to have kind of a basis. Uh, I know I'm not, okay, I may be a little different, but I'm not, I know I'm not so different that you cannot relate to this, right? When I read the Word of God, there are things in there that you have to weed through and go, okay, this means that, and what does that mean, and what's he trying to say, and you got to kind of figure some things out. But whenever you have a, just a blanket statement, like Proverbs 18.21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Then it says, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Well, let's just stick with the first part for just a minute. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. There's nothing to figure out. It just says it. Is that right? Now, I have a habit in my life that when I read the Word of God and it makes a blanket statement, just a point blank statement, I could say, I have already decided I'm going to believe it. And if my life is not lined up with it, I will change my life to line up with it. Those are the two primary principles that I try to live by. I'm not saying I always succeed at it 100% and perfectly, but just saying that's the general idea. So whenever I see a statement that says power, that, that life and, or death and life, notice it says death first, death and life are in the power of the tongue, then automatically I have to believe that death and life are in the power of the tongue. That means that if you speak death, you will of the tongue receive death. If you speak life, you will of the tongue receive life. Now, we'll also see this in just a minute at a couple other scriptures we're going to go to. But as soon as I read that, and this was years ago, but as soon as I read that death and life are in the power of the tongue, guess what? I cut out death out of my speech, out of my vocabulary. Why? Because I don't want death. Amen? Amen. I want life, and I want it in every aspect. Guess what? When you speak death, you're also speaking sickness. When you speak death, you're also speaking defeat. When you speak death, you're also speaking poverty, lack, you name it. Anything from the negative side of the columns, you might say, comes by speaking death, right? See, God made a perfect system, and you're going to see this even today, that the words that you speak is what you get, so therefore you can't blame God for anything you got. Do you get that? You technically can't even blame the devil because both God and the devil are just operating on the words you give them. Thank you for that resounding applause. (laughs) I know there's somebody on that camera watching me that actually agrees with what I just said. So, amen, all right. Listen, I know there have been people that have taken these things way out of bounds and, you know, gone too far, and I I get that. But that does not negate what the Bible says. And so if we're going to have God in our life because he is life, then you're going to have God in your speech. It's just that simple. God didn't even save you until you confessed with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And if, if... Something that important, if God left that up to you to do, how much more does he allow you to dictate the course of your life by your own words? That's why he warns us about words, and he talks about how words can snare us, and that words become a snare for us. Now, listen, when we speak life, then the words aren't a snare, they are a blessing to us, and it opens the door for God to do two things. Number one, it opens the door... Let me say it this way, that when you speak life and you speak according to the word of God, number one, you're allowing angels to work on your behalf. 
Number one, first off, right? And you allow God to bring his blessings into your life. But if you shut the door on those blessings by saying, well, I don't know why that always happens to me. I don't know, you know, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. You know, all the old hee-haw things that they used to say, if you remember my generation. And so we have to realize that your words either open the door for God to bring blessings into your life or it shuts the door. And God will not go against your will. And you say, well, that's not my will. No, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It may not be your will, but it is what you believe. Because you will have what you believe because you will say what you believe. And when you believe what you say, you have it. So it's real simple. Say, the the vast majority, I, I don't know exact percentage, but the vast majority of all the problems in a person's life can be stopped, changed, turned around if they'll just... Speak correctly. Just that simple thing. Knock out the death. Take out the defeat. Take out those things. Say what God has said about you. Don't say what the devil has said or anybody that listens to the devil. Just repeat what God has said. And basically the answer is real simple. All you ever have to do is decide what God has said about your life. Look at what he said, how how he wants your life to be, and then just speak that all the time. 